Alrighty, we're ready to roll. <coughs> Number one, walk the top Um, The reason this is kind of back on here is the process, uh, we're going to continue with the process for the closure of walkway A. Um, we're going to require a resolution simply because this isn't what our current policy is. So the resolution forthcoming will be that the policy says this, however, in this particular case, we're going to proceed with uh, the resolution with walkway A. Um, we also at this time would like to ask council to consider again the recommendation by the municipal superintendent as to reduce the threshold so that we can consider the other ones moving forward. The threshold was the initial problem and it was at 75 percent. So either way we require a resolution to move forward just because this isn't in accordance with our policy. Um, okay, so, there, again, so there's so much coming out of this that I'm having a hard time sometimes keeping up. Um, so we've got a resolution going forward to close walkway A. Right. We will, yes. Yes. So uh, walkway B and C. So both of them require public hearings? All of them would. All of them, everything requires a public hearing to close. Yeah. So uh, it seems like the immediate residents, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like the immediate residents want them closed. Am I right? The majority, yeah. correct. The majority? Well, over 50%, yes. So then why don't we move forward and uh, have the public hearings with the intent of closing them all? Okay. And then the people who are concerned will come to the meeting. We can do that. Again, I don't want people to think it's just me saying this, so... Oh, but would, it, would we have to have a meeting for each one? Or yeah, could we have we have to have one evening. Yeah. Or could we consolidate all three into one? Could we three separate? But you can have it all in one night. Like yeah, that we're closing A, B, and C and hear what they have to say. They can speak to each other. Yeah. They want. But because it's not in accordance with our policy, we just need to cover ourselves with saying, hey. Why wouldn't we close them all at once, though? Like, why close that? Why would I have three hearings? No, it's just three different applications. It's, yeah, it's because there are three different oh, okay. persons. Right. You can have it all one night, mm -hmm. but there would be three yeah. different hearings, technically. My, my thoughts on the whole thing are like I live in the area so when I look at the A, B and C I, I see there's a continuous flow of traffic that that goes from each road you come people will come through Rotary Park and then they'll cross Cudmore and come down through Traeger and I and I understand that. but I think even by closing off one of those lanes I think that'll cut down on what's going through there by quite a bit and I just I'd, I'd like to see them all closed but I don't know if that's the right answer I'd like to see probably the number one being closed walkway A closing that one first and seeing what it does and then if things continue to be issues then we can look at it further down the road that's just my thoughts there's a lot of people speaking out against the closure a lot of people so I, again right um, I would like to hear from the people firsthand right so if we have a public hearing it's not a foregone conclusion that we're going to close anything if we get let's use round numbers if we get 100 people up out at a meeting that are opposed to the closing and only 10 that want it closed we live in a democracy we need to look to our constituents right so I, I, I think we should move forward with the public hearing of closing all three and, and let's invite everybody out so my my only question with that is is that it went to a we like the vote happened and so then i guess what my question is is does the public hearing trump what the accumulated vote yes yes, yes. okay so regardless, we have to have a public hearing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Regardless, even if it was just for the one, like for the eight. Yeah. Regardless, we have to have a public hearing in accordance with the policy. And I, I believe what you're saying yeah. is, if we're going to hold one, we might as well hold for all. Yeah. Let's hold all three. Right. See what others say. Perfect. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll hear. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we're not following the policy right no. now. Correct. Okay. And we're going to move forward with the closure of all three. All three. That's the, the public consensus, hearing. Right? I'm asking. Sorry. Yeah, me too. So the consensus of council is yep. we move forward the public hearing for closing all three. 
keep in mind that one walkway is on my behind my lane, mm -hmm. but so you know I'm not declaring. I just want to let everybody know that. But I do support that direction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for it, Karen. Public hearing doesn't run us into anything. No, public hearing is an information question. Yeah. I'm yeah. in agreement with going ahead with the public hearing. I'm not 100% on all three only because of the backlash that's coming. Um, that's why I needed clarification in regards to the votes as opposed to kind of what Trump said. Yeah. Well, even if, the, even if the vote had been 100% open, pardon me, if the vote had been 100% closed, and we decided to move forward with the closing, mm -hmm. we still are required to have a public, public hearing. hearing regardless. Yes. Are the closing or the yeah. closing that will happen? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, number two, accessibility parking. So if you recall, this was brought forward at the last meeting, and we were to check with other um, communities. I have been in contact with the town of Swan River and also with Flin Flon. No luck, we had gotten a hold of the Dauphin, and they had a policy, and theirs was kind of all over too. They don't have the parking, like, parking issues on the main street as we have. Um, it's our recommendation that we consider a policy with a very narrow scope in terms of the type of businesses these spaces would be for, and then we kind of narrow it down to health facilities. So before preparing the policy, we would kind of like to see what kind of direction, and we would also like uh, council to consider the travel health building, which is very specific to health. What's our, again, I'm sorry because I'm catching up. What is our current parking? Mm -hmm. I was going to ask the same yes. question. It's based on square footage, the kind of business that you have in your property. So it's it's in our zoning where, say, a restaurant, you have to have more spaces than someone else. Right now, most of our places down, downtown are older buildings. So we have variations all over the place to get the requirements. Uh, yeah, some of them are grandfathered in. The other issue we have is... Our zoning bylaw also permits you to have a commercial space in front and apartments in the back or upstairs, which is also taking away parking spots. So on an average, most of your places are required to have anywhere from three to six parking spots in the back of their business. Most do not. So is there a requirement that you shall only park here for an hour or two hours or ten hours or something? We have downtown parking just on the main uh, or main street that is supposed to be two hour parking if I recall off the top of my head. For and nine also nine Cook nine. Avenue. Okay. So downtown is two hours? Correct. For nine to five. Yeah. From nine uh, to five. Not, over, or not permitted overnight parking in the winter time either. Is that okay? <laughs> nine to five during the day? I think it's sorry, during the, day. During the all year round or yeah. just okay. So two hours, nine to five, all year long. Mm -hmm. uh, downtown in the winter, no overnight parking. No overnight parking, I'm pretty sure. So who enforces um, that? Okay, so when we had a bylaw enforcement, we did. Right, but so now that we don't have one. Okay, uh, so just bear with me yeah. for a second. So downtown is considered Fisher. Edwards? <coughs> Not Edwards. Not for the two-hour parking. It's just the main street. <coughs> just for sure. And, and it's not even that far down. And Cook is just, Cook. yeah, Cook because of the hospital. Fisher and Cook. So people on Edwards can park as long as they want. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. But Cook ends at 3rd? Is, is that what it is? Cook is between first and second. First and first second. Isn't covered, so it's just first and second. First and second. So from f on Fisher Avenue, from where to where? I'd have to double check if it's in front of the post office. I don't know if it went that far, but I think it's from second to fourth. And then, and then, so nine to five, two hour parking on that. Winter time, no overnight. Correct. Summertime, overnight. You can park there all night. It's winter time. It's because of the plowing at night. And nobody in the town is permitted to park anywhere for more than 48 hours in one spot. 
and no, nowhere in town. Nowhere in town, side streets, residential streets, anywhere. Trigger drive. We'll tow your truck. <laughs> so nowhere in town. You get your truck towed? On the street. For more than 48 hours. 48 hours. And trailer, trailers as well? Yes. Trailers as well. Boats, trailers, yeah. campers, anything. On all streets, residential, commercial. Yeah. Any more than 48? All streets. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so Margaret has complained many times about the uptown parking, mm -hmm. right? So is it a valid complaint? I'm sure it is. It's valid enough that the two-hour parking was installed in downtown in the last three years. Okay. So how come we don't enforce it? We don't have a plan law. So, um, I hate to admit it, but I've parked in the wrong spot in Winnipeg and my car has been gone when I come looking for it. <laughs> exactly. Right? It cost me two or three hundred bucks to find it. So, how come we don't do that? Because there's no one to enforce it. Who would make the phone call? The time that we actually do enforce is... But, but nobody follows them in Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's somebody checking. Like there's a meter maid or there's a, so, a site guard or whatever, right? So if we, there's two or three tow truck companies in town. So if we, if we approach them and said, if you mark the tires at two and that car is still there at four, it's fair game to tow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see your hand in the back. Yeah, I could just, we've discussed that before, and the tow truck companies have actually said, we will not tow unless you have a town of the pot ticket on it. So we even, even when we did have, hey, we need this vehicle gone, case towing, for example, we said, I want to see that ticket physically on that window, so I'm not taking liability, I've been instructed by somebody. Yeah, it'd be liability. Yeah. So when you, again, I, I understand cities have different powers than municipalities, but I get that, right? But there are many, many, many places in Winnipeg that may not that may say parking, no parking between nine and five, and uh, if you park there, they just take your car. It's gone. Mm -hmm. There's no tickets. There's no nothing. It's just gone. It goes quick. I think must have somebody administrating that somehow. Like there has to be somebody to make the phone call. No, there isn't. No, no. The sign just said so. It would be just a city bylaw. Then. Right. Yeah, that's true got towed in the city and he had no ticket when he came out of it. So I was sitting at Portage Avenue at a meeting and I was watching Titan the Tartan towing, whatever it's called, and they were working the street. One of they just kept taking them around the corner. And those cars were gone in minutes. So going back to something else, like way back when when they removed all the uh, meters off the main street or off all the streets, whatever there was. Would it even be a, a thought to put two hour meters back on the main street in that area? Who's going to maintain them? Right? Who's going to maintain them? I don't know, yeah. just a thought. Yeah. But, but if, there was a, if, if there was clear signs put on, right? Two hour parking between nine and five, no overnight in the winter. And if the tow truck company Wants the wants the business and market and that's come out. Why, why can't they just do it? Why can't we just just say this is your territory? They, they do it in other communities. I know they approach and ask. Right, I know they do because I've had the experience. So can could a reminder about the two hour parking also go out in the water bills? The people or know no? exactly that there's they two know. hour parking. The problem is is they know we don't have anybody that's going there and beating the pavement. We haven't had anybody in almost a year. It's been over two over a year. Has it been okay? Yeah. When we did have that person in place, um, there was much more compliance. Is there any way we could ask any of our current employees to do that? Just as a sideline once in a while it doesn't have to be done every single day but if you you only have to ticket a few people and then and they get towed and it gets fixed and and now it's hit and miss random we do have our dog catcher that will randomly and he does he will when he's going by and he sees infractions he takes pictures and follows up with it so and we also, do have him but not necessarily on the main street he does no, love the residential yeah no but so if we ask him to do that say, hey, uh, as part of your job, every once in a while, we want you to check parking violation. And if you see somebody, 
here's the ticket that you hand out and you call the tow truck and you tow the guy and you don't do it every Monday or every, you do it randomly. He does it just whenever he does it. And now well, you no, never know what's going to happen. Hey? He's got schedule for it, say, once every week. He's going to do it once a week, but he might do it Monday, he might do it Thursday, he might do it Friday, he might do it whatever day. He might do it at 7 o'clock in the morning, he might do it at 10 o'clock at night. I Whatever it happens to be. This particular person gets pulled out of positions, but I can definitely bring that up to the engineering department. Well, or like. Or someone. Maybe yeah, like it may not be him, but is there somebody can do it? Like you know, I'm not saying it's going to take a ton of your day, um, but if you recognize that there's a clear violation there, why wouldn't we just try to do it? So would it require um, training? Very good. Enough. And he doesn't need to be authorized in any way to be able to write resolution. up a ticket or yeah, resolution. A resolution about fine because there's only there's only certain people within the municipality that can do the enforcement. Like who's that? Um, most of your managers, and it's for writing tickets for other infractions. While law enforcement isn't limited to parking, it's for on-site premises, for all of that kind of stuff. So that's where there's a couple more of us. Randy, I think you're one through fire department. And we have a couple of the municipal su or the supervisor for public works because he does this quite often too. If there's someone parking in a residential area and there's snow clearing and we posted it, he just goes in there, calls the tow truck, and says, "Get him gone." Is it? Uh, but is so the concerns that we heard tonight are they valid or not? Because if that's the case and we have guys that are already doing that, then why aren't we already dealing with it? Even with the parking, it was still an issue. Yeah, because people were just smart enough to move the vehicle a little further. No, oh, okay. And sadly, some of the people parking on the main street, it's their own business that they're affecting. Like their own employer's business. And there's nothing, nothing saying that once they move, they can be there another two hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Flip side of the, sides of the street, then they can be there for a Or just move a foot or two, yeah. as long as it moves the... Roll the tires. Would you be able to say a percentage of how many tickets were actually paid as to what were wrote? Probably quite a few were not paid. Honest people pay it, and honest people don't park again usually. And I'm not saying those other ones aren't, yeah. just, aren't honest, yeah. that's not what I'm trying to say. But most people that learn from the mistake pay their ticket. So if they didn't pay their ticket, would have it went to a tax bill? It can't go on taxes, it goes to collections. To collections, okay. What happens if you drop the time from two hours to one hour? Or to half hour? Can you to go anywhere then, and realistically? To go, yeah, in, go, to go get your hair done, somewhere. you need more than an hour. Oh, I don't know about that. No. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can get you like, lined up with a good haircut and get saved some time. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm saying this, what I can do is approach public works department and say at least can we do this for now, like on a trial. Um, but as far as this request is, this is a side street also that's been a request in front of a health facility. So this, we're kind of talking two different things here. This is for handicap parking and what we're talking about is downtown parking. So I think that is a, a good recommendation to look if we can spare someone up at least a minimum once a day or once a week, pardon me, to get someone out there just to, and let people know, hey, if we're going to be doing randoms, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. But in this particular case, we're looking at a, uh, a scope for businesses which we believe would require handicapped parking. And then I think the discussion too, the last time for Chad was, wasn't there some possibilities that they had spots on with the on their side. property that they could, that they could actually utilize? On the side or in the back? We're talking about the RM. Yeah. yeah. The RM and Cremation Tribal Health. Cremation Tribal Health is a little bit of a different one. Like at one point they were actually, I don't know if they ever did put the, you might be able to answer this. Did they ever put, there was a ramp that they were trying to get there? They've only proposed it so far. Okay. They had access through the back, it just wasn't ideal. So it's still something in the middle. still open. I feel like with both of these cases, it's a slippery slope because once you start allowing um, specific spots for things on main roads, um, like Margaret said when she was here, she's going to be asking for one too. 
And there's there's enough cases that you can see when you drive down Fisher every because it's definitely not all businesses down there that stretches could be made that they're to deal with health care or they're to deal with situations where they would require handicapped spots to be placed on the main drag. And both of these businesses or both of these locations um, have have their own parking and they, they should be making some type of allowances within their own parking to 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 provide those spaces. That's my thought. Well said. Bill? Bill, I think you got something. No, I don't know where to go with this. I think we just have to throw it out there the way Randy said, in that uh, we uh, take one of our town employees and just sporadically do, and hopefully the message gets out there that this is the case. And uh, the handicap parking, well, that, that's just a thing all in itself because. You can just about make that rule in every business that you, you want handicap parking. Especially with the new regulations. That's where this is all coming from. Well, it's a, yeah. Act, act it's a sub yeah. accessibility act. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge thing, for sure. So is the consensus that we not proceed with the handicap parking for these two? Is that, the, is that what we're saying? Well, it wasn't the discussion whether we were going to have a policy around it, not whether we were going to approve to have a it's handicap kind of spot. Is, we're going to have a policy, and or we're asking, like, can we prepare a policy? And it, in there, we were saying to permit certain businesses, but it yeah. could be a policy that we don't permit. I kind of, I'm, I'm sort of uh, with Chad. Like, uh, they, you know, if we have businesses that have spots where they can use them, I would suggest they do that first because the real estate so important for others on that street. We got a personal park, is there just no parking? Yeah. yeah. No, we we could resolve part of that I guess if if council wanted to or whatever purchase the lot where the line was. It's sold. It's sold. It's sold. Okay. And then put it into downtown parking or something like that. Miscarry. Well, I'm just thinking in regards to the RM. Um, if in behind a spot became handicapped parking, then that's going to take away from the existing people who work there who are parking, and then they'll need to park somewhere else, which will jam up somewhere else. I don't know how. Well, I don't know how you fix there. it. They must have six wow. months, eh? Six, yeah. six or eight. I don't know how many people work in the office at any given time. Four I guess five four, four to five. Okay. So then <coughs> we need to make a yeah. decision, folks. So then yeah. we'll go with Chaz with what he had said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that we don't, we'll create a policy that says there will be no designated parking or handicap parking on both streets. On both streets, we'll review it case by case. Yeah. But if they have on-site parking on their property, we will direct them to go this first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if we can put it on a future agenda, we should talk about parking. Mm -hmm. Bit more because there's. I look, well, I look it's, that's a policy it's a, that's there. It's a hundred years old. Yeah, and it's a bigger discussion than just this. Because there are several areas of town that use town boulevards like it's their own parking lot. Okie dokie. Smoke detectors and rental properties. Issue sheet on behalf of the mayor. Uh, the reason I brought that up is we had a fire recently, and I believe it was a rental property, yeah. and I don't think they had smoke detectors. They did have smoke detectors, the batteries they? were removed. Batteries were removed. So where do we stand on that, Randy, when it comes to rental properties? Well, the difficulty... Let me go to school over here. Young over here. A rental property, unless defined as an apartment block, 
is no different than your home, Chad's home, my home. It is a private dwelling. So there's nothing that allows you in law to just go in and make sure that you have detectives working. That's where we're at. Um, the department has taken on definitely a stance over the past couple of years of educating more people, the importance of them, the value in them. I feel that's the best avenue of doing it. The building code and the fire code already say you need to have them. Whether people have them or not is very impossible to enforce on a private dwelling. The other problem you have is there's no way of knowing what are rental properties and what are private properties. So if I own a home and my wife owns a home and we decide to shack up together, we rent that place, we have no, nobody knows that that is a rental property. And as a town, we're not entitled to know that either, right? I don't think we, we can yeah. as, assume, right. but again, if I come to your door, I'm like a vampire. I come to your door, you invite me in, I can do anything you let me do. If you don't let me in, there's no law that allows me to come in without a warrant. Now, when you get into the Fire Protective Services Act, if there's an emergency there, I have every right to go in and do what I need to to prevent further damage, putting out a fire, rescuing someone, whatever it may be. But I have no right to enter without just cause. So, Randy, so again, because it's just a discussion. I don't yeah. So, um, I want to become a landlord, right? And I buy a house that I can is there anything I have to do? Is there, are there no rules in place that I have to follow? From my understanding, if you were, as you say, renting a, or going to rent a home, uh, from my understanding in terms of insurance, insurance will expect you to check on that tenant at least twice a year to make sure things work the way they're supposed to work. Now, the actual law of that, I can't quote. I've talked to a number of tenants that have those situations where they have an extra home, they're renting it out, and from their words, I must check on it and keep records of that, that I have gone into this home and check to make sure things are, make sure there's not a grow wall, make sure there are smoke detectors, things like that to make sure the home is kept in a certain standard. So, so what rights do we have as a municipality? What, what do we have? In exactly what we're talking about? Yeah, with, with rental properties, with fire protection, with code enforcement. Well, it really comes down to, and what our bylaw basically speaks to, is your Fire Prevention and Emergency Response Act. Everything is governed in there. Now, you get into the specifics, as we're talking about right now, um, entry for fire safety investigate or inspection. That's basically what we're talking about, right? Make sure the home that they're dwelling in is safe. Now, keep in mind, there's a difference between a dwelling and a building. A building would be, say, a, a storefront downtown and you have, and a, have an apartment in it. The dwelling would be where they're living, the building itself, even though there's living quarters in it, is now considered a building. A public building, I have the right to at any time to go in and inspect. And we're now establishing that plan on going basically door to door, getting back on board. Because there are certain establishments that, as a hotel for example, you being a hotel owner, every three years we should be coming and inspecting your property. Um, a school for example, would be every three years. Some we do more often, a daycare gets it every year. So private dwelling, there, are no, there is no legislation that at any time I have the right to enter your property without your consent. So I can come and knock on the door like we did on December 18th and say, hey, we're checking to make sure your home is as safe as possible. Do you have these items? If they decide to slam the door in our face, there's nothing we can do about that unless in that conversation I discover or get the intent or the feeling that there's something wrong, I could then go and get a warrant from the provincial courts to access that property but I would have to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that we should enter that property for the safety of the community or that household. Are, are there any provincial laws? Okay, you can, is it the Wild West? You can do whatever you want? In your own dwelling? It's, no, no, for rental property. We're not talking about there's no way of proving what a rental property is though. That's what I mean. If you just rent a house, there's nothing that you have the right to know that that's a rental property. You have the exact same rights as a renter as you do as an owner. You are dwelling in that space, therefore you have the same legal right. You are not, your rights can't be infringed upon, upon the illegal search and seizure, and that's yeah, basically what it no, is. No, 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 what I'm getting at, Randy, so like, uh, it, it, how do I explain what I'm trying to say? So, Billy there is renting a house, right? We know that Billy's renting that house. 
And Billy has tenants that come and they go and they come and they go, right? As a municipality, or even as a potential renter, does that renter not have any rights to an expectation of safety? Right? Does he not? Are there no, are there no rules in place in Manitoba that says that? That would be under the Tenancy Landlords, Landlords Act, Act, which I say an insurance act that says you must check on ensure your property yeah. is safe twice a year. No, but still, but does that tenant not have any expectation of protection from the government, whether it's municipal or provincial, that that building will meet a certain level of, of, of safety? That falls into the fire code and the building code that says you must have smoke detectors, right. must have carbon monoxide so detectors. That us? Yes, it's us, but you can't physically go in and verify it happens. If, say, for example, a renter said, I want to make sure my tenant is safe. Could you please go and do an inspection? I'm giving you consent to do that. Okay? So I go there, I do an inspection. All the, all the smoke detectors work. Everything's great. I leave. The homeowner or the renter decides, well, I'm going to take these batteries to my next apartment. They pull the batteries out. There's no way of proving that the, that building is safe. So as an example with the, what brought us to today, the fire that happened on Taylor, they had a smoke detector, batteries were removed. We don't know if those batteries had never been there or if they'd been removed the night before because they burnt supper. Right? There's no way of knowing that. Yeah, I don't know. Right? I, I personally feel we're not doing enough. And I'm not sure what we can do. But I personally feel we're not doing enough. And I can say that because I get into a lot of homes that are rental properties. And it's not my job as the mayor to be the police inspector, right? And when I'm appraising a house or looking at somebody's house, um, I see things, and, and I just think to myself, how come nobody's checking this out? You know, you go into basements with no egress windows. You go into homes with no smoke detectors. Like, how come nobody is checking this out? And that's what I don't understand. To me, and then again, and I, like some people are paying some pretty good rent starts. And I would expect or hope that there's some sort of level of safety and protection for them. The safety is the expectation, as by the law, to have a smoke detector. And depending on the age of your home, it maybe have to be hardwired in. Well, and it has to be. Huh? Yeah. So but who's enforcing that? When you come and get a permit. I can't go door to door. That's an impossible task because of the fact that I don't have the right to enter a private dwelling. So, so really that's... So nobody is, then, is what you're saying. No, what you're saying is you educate people to make sure that they're doing everything possible to go around and look after themselves. You know, it, it's nice to believe we can take everyone by the hand and say this is what you need to do, but unfortunately the real world is the best thing is to express the importance, the value, what they do for you, and eventually over time you'll find that 95% of places will have smoke detectors. They say the average in Canada right now is about 85% of homes have them, based on what we found on December 18th when we went around, our numbers are more like 55%. And we deliberately targeted sort of the older neighborhoods, the more established neighborhoods, for exactly that reason, because anything new built, like we didn't bother going into uh, behind snack land or Gamer Crescent, because those homes all would have required a hardwired system. I, I just find it amazing that we have no power is really what you're saying. I find it amazing. I'm not saying we don't have any power. I'm saying the homeowner has a lot of rights that prevent us from babysitting them is basically what it comes down to. All we can do is express the importance and write the law. It's in essence the same thing saying the law says you can't speak so don't so we expect nobody's going to. All we can do is educate why you don't speed, why you aren't breaking the law. But they sure as hell enforce that one. Yeah, it's cheap anymore. Right, because it's very easy for an officer to sit on the side of the road and catch a guy speeding by. It's not, it's not a possible task because right there they are breaking the law. We don't know they're breaking the law. We're going to someone's door assuming they are. Therefore, you basically put them on the defensive of, well, of course I have one. And whether they do or not is irrelevant. It, uh, we came very close to having two people die. Very close. Yeah. And it, because... To me, they have no protection. And uh, it seems like we're a toothless dog, so to speak. But the question we is, why did they not have protection? Did they remove those batteries? Uh, right? right. The, the homeowner, the person that does the renting, put smoke detectors in that building. 
What happens once that person moves in? We lose that right to verify if they've continued with that action. And it's, so, on the, it's the onus on the owner to look after it too. Right. The renter or whatever, if they want to be safe in their home, they do it. Is the rental property still considered a single family dwelling then? Or yes. no? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Duplex okay. or a single dwelling, yes. Hmm. Well, he's in, yeah. But each individual dwelling within each, an apartment is yep. still a single It's family. still a suite, yes. That's now yeah. a dwelling suite inside an apartment yeah. complex, right? Which means I can go in and I can do an inspection as per requirements to make sure that everything is functioning and they have to show me the records to show that it's working, yeah. right? That is it's there, tested uh, and verified. Is there anything in the Municipal Act that gives us the authority to uh, determine what is a rental property and what isn't? Not that I'm aware of. Could we, could we check that out a bit more to see if there is anything? Because if there is a, if, if you must register your property as a rental property, then, then we would know which ones are, first off, right? In the old days, it used to be the water bills, but then that all went yeah. right? Uh, uh, but is there no way to know? Do we not have any say in this game? But what would you what would you accomplish though, Herb? Well, because if uh, you know, and I get, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I'm a renter, or I'm a property owner, and I'm renting it out, and I rent to Chad, and Randy came and inspected it, and he went and seen Chad that day, and everything's good, and then Chad takes down the smoke detector. But Randy can't go there every day. No, but if at least there was an expectation of an annual inspection unannounced, I, I, I think that would provide some people with some comfort. Because I do know that there are homes in town that are being rented with things like no egress windows. I know that for sure. But and would we have the... Would that's we actually have the day the also keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're going to apply to become a rental property today, yeah. then you should have to meet the code of today. Is there, a, is there a rule that If I'm there's not. a bedroom there or not, yes. They could say, I'm not going to use no. it as a bedroom, it's a storage room, right? No, is there a rule that says you have to, you have to, uh, you know, deter or tell people or tell the town that you're, this is a rental property and not uh, where I'm That's what I asked. No, that's what he's oh, okay. There's not that I'm aware of, but we'll double check on it. I'd also be curious to contact landlord tenants and see what protection there is for the, for the people also. Like people that's usually where you go through is landlord tenants. Yeah. But at, at one time, egress windows weren't. No, you could have almost anything. Have but anything. now, for sure. Under the new building code, you have to have it. Right. So an older home, an older home, may have nothing that complies with anything. Well, but and but that's just it. You could rent me that house and say, "What's an old bedroom house?" Or whatever. Right, you could, doesn't. exactly. You could, what you say and what happens are two mm -hmm. different things, right? Exactly. So this this bedroom is here downstairs, but legally you can't use it, so please don't sleep in it. A, you decide to move someone else in there, the, t the responsibility falls off of that, that tenant now. Or the tenant is responsible, however, the landlord let them rent it. So where do you point the finger? Yeah, see, in my opinion, if it's a rental property, it should be subject to an annual inspection. Right, but even if you do that inspection, like you say, talk about an egress window, for example, the minute I leave, they pull the batteries out, or the bedroom that isn't supposed to be a bedroom becomes a bedroom again, there's no way of enforcing that. You just go back for a spot check. That's all. You just go back for a spot check. I agree with those things. Different agencies. <laughs> Good. Uh, just talk to Bert. If, you, if Bert gives you an order that you shall fix something, you fix it. Not in a private dwelling, you can't. But no, in a business setting, right? For business sure, business setting, for sure. Right? Yeah. Yep. So if, if Bert tells me to fix that, and I fix that, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to be a smart ass, I'm gone now, Poof, put it away. Yep. If he comes back and it's not there, cool. I got a big fine to pay. Have fun with that. Right? Especially with Bert. Yeah. Right. And so why aren't we as good as Bert? Yeah. That's what I don't understand. Because you don't have the ability to drive a dwelling. You don't have the authority. You don't have the legal have, authority. I think, I think Randy's right. You have to check into the Landlord Tenants Act. To I'll ask you a few. It's yeah. a definitely a good question. Like again, two people came very, very close to dying, and I really don't want to hear that two people did. And that's why we've really so ramped up the public effort, education to show the importance. All right. How did the, the fire alarm? Installation and battery check thing go? We ended up visiting 105 homes. We installed because the reason we bought smoke alarms is because we would never want to go to somebody's house and Without say, for example, we go to Andre's and say, Do you have a smoke tech? No, I don't. Okay, we can you go get one. Guarantee you that's where the fire is happening that night. 
right? Yeah. I guarantee you that's just the way it works. <laughs> so we made sure we went out and bought our smoke detector, say you don't have one, let us install one for you right now. Everyone had the right to say, no, we don't want one. We're good, we'll go buy one when we want. But most people were very receptive to us to install. So we installed the 34 smoke detectors. We changed 34 batteries mm-hmm. as well and a lot of good public education. We only had, out of the 105 homes, we had about three or four homes that said, ah, I'll look after it. Like they were kind of not welcoming. Almost everyone was, I was actually shocked, LaRose had very good stats, but everyone had multiple smoke detectors in their home. So it was, I think, very well received. And even though we only visited 105 homes, because we had two hours, we had a lot of positive reviews afterwards say, it made me check my stuff. It made me look at things. And the reason we chose Christmas is because the stats show a lot of accidents happen during Christmas time, right? A lot of things, everyone's busy, things happen in life, but it became a good reminder for people. And that's where I think we need to keep spending our efforts, our education, 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 and eventually culture changes. That's, that's all you can really do. Once, once you go into the schools and get the kids yeah. into the and it, uh, Those are all very altruistic goals. I get it. Right? Yeah. That's some very altruistic goals. The fact of the matter is, there is nothing to rent in our community. There's zero. Yeah. So there are some people in town, in my opinion, that are being taken advantage of because there is nothing to rent. And those people will not complain that, that the fire inspector or the, the fire detector isn't there or the window isn't there. They won't complain no. because they're just happy to have a window right. open. Or but it has to come from consent. So like I say, I think that is a good starting point, as you point out to Randy, to find out if we can find out a number on our rental units, but it still comes down to consent. Yeah. And, and the business owner has to do that each year for, uh, or the, the owner has to do that each year for his insurance. Right. Um, so he's yeah, held no, somewhat. No. No? no. I've, no. I'm on a property for a long time, in rental property, and I've had the insurance company come call in once where they wanted to look at the property. Yeah, it's not yeah, but they didn't ask you each time no. on your permit. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. For us, most of the time, when we, when it comes to the homeowners, most yeah, yeah. So what it is when you live in your residence, you get the homeowners rebate. So say if Chad has multiple homes, we would automatically go, well, these must be rentals, or if they come in and the water bill is under name, these must be rentals. But I don't believe there is anything under the Assessment Act or under the Municipal Act. I'll double check again just to be sure but that says that they have to register which one they're actually in. And but I'll look into the landlord reddit, or landlord tenants and I'll also look into the province and the municipal act about rental property versus personal and inspections. Cool. Alrighty, planning and development, subdivision application. So this is nice, we now have another body that uh, our subdivisions go to, which is your planning district stuff. Um, so what this is, it's a property on a T. I believe the building was constructed on the property. The back lane was closed in between. So this is pretty much consolidation of lots to create one lot. I believe this was probably in the best interest moving forward to approve this. This is so they can have the back, a little back lane on the back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all I have to say. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it is clean up. So sorry, I'm just, just so I'm clear on the process. Why is this coming through as a subdivision application? Consolidation a lot. Yeah, is that like, okay. Uh, That's what confused me too. Yeah, yeah so I think it's subdivision, I think of. Yeah, oh, so oh, yeah. yeah, it's either splitting up or putting into one. Okay. Yeah, so this actually cleans the property up. Sure. So we have uh, consensus to move forward with it. So the other ones, if they came and asked the same thing, it would be no big deal? If they want that. Yes. Yeah. Is that lane again, that lane? Yeah. On both ends. It's pretty much been like that all along. There's no way it's there. There's no way there. It's just Close it's done. It was owned by one guy that had the weird shape lot you'll ever see. Oh, okay. So yeah, now this person, they have a building. I, I'm i pretty sure they have a building that's on that little strip too. So yeah. this is cleaning up the property. Yeah, I think that's Michael fenced that whole thing. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. all fenced. So he, no, it's just to clean that up. Okie dokie, so we'll move forward with that, everybody. Ms. Atkinson, you good yes. with Yes, look at that. 209 Fisher Island. Tell us about 209 Fisher Island. <laughs> oh. 
Yes. So I understand this was brought forward. Uh, you must have had an inquiry mm -hmm. and Jen had done the history as to what's been going on. Basically, at one point, there was construction happening in there. There was a stop work order. There was a, a use that wasn't permitted in that zone. We asked for a statement saying, what's your plan? What are you doing there? It's still on our books as that. So basically, all they require is to come back and say, hey, we're doing no construction, or just let us know what's going on. That's all this is. So should we ask for a meeting with them to find out what's going on? To me, I would even just send them a letter requesting, hey, what's going on there? Has anything changed? Has there been any development? Have you done any physical work there? Do you still need a permit? Are you not doing any construction? Let us know so we can get this removed. Uh, this is what the Crossroads Center is now on the Rose, I believe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There was work started in there without a permit, so it was like, hey, we're shutting this down, but we'll, yeah. So all they're going to do is come back and say, hey, no work actually commenced, we're not doing this. Or, yeah, we need to do this, we get the permits, we're ready to go, do what you need. So, okay. I can do that in an email to them. Sure, let's find out what's going on with that, because it's been brought up a couple times. For sure. Um, did we ask for a business plan? Did I read that in here? Yeah. Yep. Why would we ask for a business plan? Because at that point, the uh, use, it was not permitted. What they wanted to use it for was not permitted in that, um, in that specific building. And at that point, council wanted to retain what they could commercial in the downtown area, and that didn't fall under the use. So they said, what's your plan? Because they said, well, no, this does fall under. And we said, okay, what's your plan? Because according to what we see, we can't really fit. Do we normally ask for a business plan? If it doesn't fit the zoning and you say it does, yes. Um, okay, well, why don't we contact them and let's get the discussion going and figure out what we can do because I think somebody would like to do something. With that. For sure, and that would be great. Where exactly is that building? Right next to Prego right Street. Right oh, okay. They wanted the youth center to be in there. But it was denied. Okay, so we'll ask them for more info. For sure, and ideally it would be great if someone's wanting to use it. Right. One more building downtown that's being utilized. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, I'm just telling yeah. Andre yeah. that they had wanted um, the youth center to be there, but it was denied. Yeah, and it's yeah. over on the yeah. road. Yeah. The Family Resource Homes Center owns a building. Yeah. The whole building. Mm -hmm. More to come. Uh, building Inspector for the RM of Kelsey. Mr. Manch is here to tell Council at asked about bringing him forward to discuss this at this meeting to see if this was something they believed that he could undertake on behalf of the RM or on behalf of the RM. I've seen the fire truck park there today. I thought maybe it already started. <laughs> no, I made, made sure I had all my stats from them on what exactly would be involved. This was a discussion that goes back with Mr. Brzezowicki as far as a month after I started here in April of three years ago. Almost four years ago. So what do you have in mind, Randy? Can you do it? Well, based on the huge volume of permits that are being issued at the RM being an average of 10 over the past uh, year. Absolutely. I don't think it's a matter of can we afford the time or else. It's a matter of can we afford not to. As we were just having a discussion about education, um, we are the fire suppression service to the RM of Kelsey. It only makes sense to have a say in not only their building code but also their fire code with existing buildings and this would allow that. Again, I'd rather prevent fires than be putting them out. It's exciting putting fires out, but let's not have them in the first place. So when you started doing the building permits for the town, what was, how much of a spike was there from when OFC was taking care of building permits to when you started doing building permits? I don't have that stat on how many they issued compared to how many we issued. Um, there is. You, you say that the RM is averaging 10. Yeah. That I guarantee you it's more than that. Right? Well, exactly. The number that should be issued to how many were issued is a totally different story, right? Um, last year, we had 20 permits issued. That's all we did in the town of the Paul. And that was with an expected boom with people wanting to build the lake, build it, 
uh, behind Snackland, Garmin Crescent, whatever it may be, we had 20 permits. We had one new house built in this town. And that was not a new home, that was because one burnt down. Then we were fortunate enough to have a duplex built on Bignall, which is another realistically considered a boom. There hasn't been a lot of development in the town. Mm -hmm. That people are applying for. That people are applying for. But of course you can see, you, there are new, new homes being built. The person building a deck in the backyard or the you know, mo modification to the home that exists already, I guarantee you there's a lot of contractors in town that are steadily busy, but I'm not issuing very many permits. So, it, And not everything does need a permit, right? If you're replacing flooring, you're doing painting, you're doing things that are considered maintenance work, that doesn't need a permit. Mm -hmm. But any alteration, you're touching the plumbing system, you're, you're changing any type of flows in the building, changing windows, for example, that maybe you're changing the size of the window, that requires a permit. Changing out a window that already exists to the same size does not require a permit. So again, it depends on the scale of the scope of work. And when the OSC was doing our building permits, we were paying them $17,000 a year, and they kept the building permit fee. Right. And we saw them maybe once Once, a year, maybe twice once a year. twice a year. They weren't actually coming in the inspection. Plus, you may have some pictures again. Plus, in doing that, at the end of the day, when we hired them to do our inspections, we were responsible. Even if they messed up, they were still a municipal. Yeah. The municipality was responsible. I went through this when I was with the Army Kelsey. Um, OFC didn't do the inspections as they were supposed to, and uh, there was a big lawsuit, and it was the homeowner that ended up paying the short end of the stick because it was a, kind of an argument over who was responsible when it came to the inspections. At the end of the day, it's the municipality that takes the owners. So how will, so if, um, so, what do you do? so how do you handle that now if you see somebody building a deck and building on a apartment? It's a stop-in visit to explain why. And again, a deck, if you're more than 27 inches off the ground, you need a permit for it. If you're less than 27 inches, you don't need one. So again, it's a matter of assessing what are they doing. You see any type of construction, you pull in and have a conversation. Fortunately, they do have a relationship with almost every contractor in town in one form or another. And it's a, usually a quite simple discussion. The first year, I'll have to say, was nothing but a headache because that was the year of education, right? Everyone had been so used to not building, not getting permits because they knew nobody wasn't going to enforce it. There was nobody around looking after the town's interests or the homeowner's interests because really at the end of the day, that is the purpose of a building permit is to ensure that the homeowner is safe. So how will the workflow be initiated with the RM? How will that work? It would work in the same format as, as when we had the Office of Fire Commissioner. So what would happen is they would take an application, it would be a development contract that says this is what we want to do, they would sign off to say yes, we are okay with this development, at which point then we would take over the building inspection. So they're going to do similar to what we do now, when we have someone applying, say for example a new home, Jen and Randy look after the zoning aspect. Does this request fit all of the zoning application? Once that is done, they sign off on that legal survey, says, yes, I'm good with everything here. I am then responsible for the building itself. So the RM will do that part of it? The RM will do that. They will sign off to say we, as the authority having jurisdiction, are in agreement to this development and this plan. I then look after the construction itself. And the building code is a provincial code? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a national code which then provincial mandates and then you can even go as far as, which you'll see hopefully in the next month, I know we've been talking about it forever, but uh, the, uh, the Town of the Paw or the Arm of Kelsey can also have their own expectations on what you want to see. Which can again be above and beyond the code, it can't be less than our current code. Is there specific training you have to be to be a building inspector? Oh, yeah. there, there is, I, I took a total of 12 courses um, to be the building inspector. Now, they're all recognized courses through Office of the Fire Commissioner. Um, whether they are required or not is up for debate. Part threes, they are required courses, which the Office of Fire Commissioner no longer offers. I was actually in the very last courses for the part threes. Now they go through Red River only. Uh, so things like stop work orders, you yes. can issue those? Yes. And what if I choose to ignore it? Then you make another nice request, and if you don't, you get a court injunction against it. Is there any fines? There are fines attached to it. If, say, for example, you started work before uh, you applied for your permit, your fee is double. 
Now, obviously, the first year, as I said, you try to educate people as much as possible because it was, as you described earlier, the Wild West for so long, right? So you wanted people to learn to do it right rather than punishing them for maybe not knowing exactly what's expected. Now, are there those individuals that pretend they don't know? Absolutely. But all you can do is try to instill the importance, the value of it. Some people believe that a building permit is nothing but another tax grab and fills our coffers. Permits don't give us enough money to make it worth our while, the headache we sometimes go with. It's meant about occupant safety. So how much are our fines? Uh, well, I said, if you were to start a project before you had one, if that project was valued at $3,000, that permit is double, so your $6,000 permit. Okay. Um, most of our permits that were issued over the past year are things for garages, minor alterations, things like that, where your base on a garage is $60. So the maximum fine right there is 120 now we do have other, so no, sorry, they're no. not called fines anymore, they're called fees, just because we try to avoid the word of fines for other legal So reasons. what's a new permit, like if you're building a house? If you're going to be building a new home at Clearwater Lake, for example, uh, depending on the size, a permit, the way it works is you are 1% of the first $100,000, then 0.6% for every value after that. So if you're going to build a $100,000 house, which is basically impossible, that's what they're building garages for nowadays, it's a thousand dollar permit. You build a two thousand or a two hundred thousand dollar home, you're sixteen hundred dollars, and so on. So, if you issue a stop work order, what's the fine attached to that? The stop work order does not have a fine, unless it was because of the fact that they started the work before having a permit. If they had a permit and the stop work order happened because maybe an inspection didn't happen, which to this date hasn't happened because of course it turns into everybody else's fault except their own which then turns into another big fight so realistically we haven't had any situations where people haven't said uh, I'm just not going to observe this and I'm going to keep going they come in and they rectify it and that's all we're trying to do is achieve what the purpose of the permit was initially to make sure it's safe and in compliance especially when it comes to occupant safety so why don't we put a fine on a stop work order if they ignore it? Well, if they ignore it, there will be fines, but again, it's based off of what the infraction was. Okay. I don't have the list in front of me sorry, to give you exactly what you would have to do to instill a certain fine because we haven't had to. Normally, most people, and I like to believe most people are, are honest and say, sorry, I made a mistake, how do I make this right? We haven't had anybody to this day say, I'm not listening or I'm not going to comply with you, I'm going to do whatever I want. All the contractors are have business licenses. I couldn't answer that. Yeah. Well, if they take out a building permit, they have to. Yes, but because it's a new year right now, I can't tell you who has a new building permit because all building or all uh, business license would have expired on December thirty first. So how many have come in in the past fourteen days? I don't some know. Some were slow. Yeah. But it's it's common for it to be in January for some. Yeah. yeah. They still pay for the full year. Okay. All, um, Can a contractor who doesn't have a building or doesn't have a business license, can you get a permit? No. 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 Unless you are private. If you if you were building something in your backyard and you need a permit, then obviously you don't need one. But yes. And, and what if uh, you see a contractor working in town who doesn't have a permit, a building license, or a building, uh, business license? I don't have that information. No, so well, what would you do? I would tell them to get one, as I've done in the past. When I first came to the Paul, we had about 75 business licenses issued. We're now more at about 185 licenses. And that was from the initiatives that we took three years ago by saying this is important. But keep in mind that business licenses fall under public works. Chris McTaggart's name is attached to them, and public works issues them. So I don't, unless I go and seek it out, I don't have that information. But if someone is applying for a permit, I make sure that they have a business license before applying for a permit whether that be an in-town or an out-of-town business doing the construction. An out-of-town business, a business license is $500. So uh, when you see out-of-town companies in the community, what do you do? If I see one I haven't seen before, a lot of times it'll be a discussion with Sharon at the front desk, Public Works, and say, hey, I saw so-and-so. And usually, actually, the one thing I can definitely really uh, compliment Sharon for is she's usually on it. She does what if it. they're working at the mill? You go get the build up build it up to be a licensed business to work at the mill? They should be, but uh, who's checking? No idea. Is that your job? No. Whose job is it? It's everybody's job. So to go door to door and knock on windows, yeah we could do that I guess, but 
Well, but if it's okay, so you got a major shutdown coming. Yeah. Right? It's going to be for three weeks. Yeah. Who's checking to make sure they all have a business license? As far as I know, nobody is. So again, we're a toothless dog. We got all these rules, and we're not enforcing them. Then I would suggest we hire a public safety or a public safety officer or bylaw officer. And we've tried that route over and over and over, and that's the difficulty we have. So we have local people in town who are doing their darndest to follow the rules, and you have people coming in from out of town doing the big jobs, and we don't enforce the rules on them. Actually, without sounding too negative, it's actually the other way around. The people that come in from out of town are usually better at following the rules than the people in town. When it comes to building permits and... What does it cost those. for business license? If you're an in-town, local area, you're $100. If you are an out-of-town business, it's $500, but you can also buy different rated ones based on what you're doing. Some do as a transient license because yeah. they only want to be here very short right. They might only be here for a week, right? So they can buy, I think, one for half rate at 250 I think it is. But you might have somebody here for three weeks doing $5 million. They should be forced to buy a list, shouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lots, of, lots of companies that roll through town that lots are here of companies companies that roll for, town. for two days, three days. In saying that, what we can do is have engineering write a letter to some large businesses, including the schools, and saying, hey, uh, please ensure that they attend a town office to get the permit. And sadly, what 99% of it is, if you see a contractor coming into town, God help you, you have the next contractor that's calling to make sure that they have a license, which is good. That's basically a lot of the enforcement is the next guy saying, I have to pay it, so we see, and they're correct. Well, I thought you meant the contractors, the in-town contractors, probably will pay it. Yeah, they do, oh, okay. which is good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, not to belabor the point, so uh, I see Billy's contracting service from Winnipeg in town, and I know he's working out of Monday. Do I call him to go and enforce that license? You'd have to share with them to make sure they get the license, and if they're not getting the permit through him. And so he'll go out to the mill issue a stop recording? If he's no, doing the I don't have authority out of the mill. It's town property. Yes, but I don't have, that's for business license, not for a, bu a building permit. I have no authority. That's is why that I would never know who's yes. actually there. Commercial property. That is a part three building, which the OFC will not relinquish to us. <clears throat> so realistically, not to throw anything Mr. Murphy's way, but when CKPI is bringing in a large number of subcontractors, is really what they are, that insurance should come or a little bit of direction could come from CKPI to say, could you please ensure that your business license is looked after. Is there any um, advertising material in any of the lumber yards about the requirements for uh, building permits and such? I actually took some to I a think local we have. shop. I'm sure we have something hanging up. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we do. And I, I believe under at our counters as well. Um, could probably be updated if it's changed, if any rules Nothing's have changed, changed. But I dropped them off for you three years ago when I started. And I know Bryce was sure not interested, sorry, one of the other owners was not interested in putting it up because it felt like they were taking some responsibility, but it was just general information. If that information was out of the plant, we would likely help with... We're doing the right direction. Yeah. I think more photocopier. Yeah. Like right right yeah. 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 Like if you sent sent us a just a reminder. sent us a letter. Yeah. Because I don't know if the guys do that or not. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, yeah, Jerry, uh, Jerry's discussion with me today, not that I'll get into specifics with money because that's up to the higher up sure. But what Jerry had basically explained to me, we are looking to pay the same rates that we paid the Office of the Fire Commissioner with better services basically with them because of the fact that I'm available to go and do them. Keeping in mind that part nine inspections are not very time consuming, right? If there was a big boom, even if they built 20 houses out there, that's not a huge time consumption. I mean, obviously there's inspections required and that's what they're looking for, that the occupant safety is actually being looked after rather than just some more money that's leaving their community. So yes, it is a, a retainer fee plus a yes. service fee. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, I think it's, I think it's a great avenue, like especially with some of your time being freed up now, I think it's a great way. Mm. Well, like I say, it, it's one of those things where we provide the fire suppression right now. It only makes sense to also have a say in the building permits and, uh, or the, National Building Code and the Fire National Fire Code. They go hand in hand. For sure. So would this be a yearly contract? Or is it, it something that right would now. go... Yeah. It, it, more than likely it would be, unless there was a reason, and uh, that was something else that Jerry and I had talked to today, that it would only make sense to do it on a year-by-year -year basis. Once it's established and everything is going as they thought it would, then maybe that term would get extended, but as long as you're reviewing it on a yearly basis, right. Because they may have 10 now, but what all of a sudden, if they have like 50, the follow, you know, yep. is that something you can keep up with? You don't know until you get there. Yeah. You All you can do is based off the worst case scenario in the past, where they're issuing 10 to 12 permits a year. Um, the right answer is I'm so darn busy right now, <laughs> but I'll see what I can do to squeeze it in and prioritize my time. Well, if you'd like to give one, if you'd like me to really get into my honest answer, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So how many uh, permits did you, or how many did uh, building inspections did you have to do within the community in the past year? We did 20 permits. That's what we did in the 2018. Okay, so next year you could possibly have... 20. 30. <laughs> 28. 28. Based 28. on discussions with uh, our development of that, uh, I'm not boxel. expecting any big boom this year. No. I'm really not. It's unfortunate because I was quite hopeful for it, but just kind of being a realist. Negative. Yeah. I would love to see the boom. Okay. Okay. So we're generally in consensus of moving forward with the idea. Yeah. Yes. Okay. More to come. I'm sure. All right. Settlement services. This is more for information. Are they going to want any kind of letter of support? They seem like a letter of support that we're yeah. prepared to. Uh, they, they have one in Small River. We're apparently the largest community in Manitoba that doesn't have this service. Really? Yeah, it's, it's weird on you. We, I looked at that on the weekend and when I was in Humboldt, they have one. I walked. They have one. Humboldt have one? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, you just made support. this as a mandate to receive. That's right. So <laughs> that's, that's, the timing yeah. is uncanny. I know. So of course we would We're offer a letter of support for them to get the funding for this program yeah, for our area. For sure. Yeah. I think it's great. Agreed. Yeah. So what I would do We're is probably sounds like sandbagging to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to also, just so they know when maybe they want to send a letter of support also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The letter of support. Mm -hmm. Oh, tendering. So we've talked about this, we've never set dates. Do you want to have subcommittee deal with this at a level with Graham and then bring it back to the entire council? Do you want all of the entire council? I, I would like to see, you know, unless everybody wants to be there, I would like to see a bit of a subcommittee beat this out a little bit. Uh, it's something that I have a bit of a concern in. So I don't know if anybody else would like to participate in that. I don't think it requires all of council just yet, but I think we should go through it. I'll, I'll sit through there with you too, Bert, if you, or Bert. I heard with you. Uh, you like? Yeah. You got me on. You got me on a bird limpet thing. I was the same. You know, the same. You getting shit done. That's all. Anybody else wanting? Bill, yes. Yeah. So, if you can, do you want us to set that up in three of you, or sure. are you yeah. going to take the lead no, on? No, no, you guys. Set that so we're right. just going to tell you when, and you're going to show well, up, right? Well, give us a couple of day options, <laughs> and we'll do it. Great, Andre, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. AMM convention, March 19th and 20th. This is the one, if you recall, in November we talked about that I said would be beneficial for anyone and everyone to go. Yeah. Um, 
this is more for your new members. I felt kind of bad for Larry because the meeting he went to was already, like, it was big. It was voting on big resolutions and stuff like that where moving in and just starting would have been very difficult for him, but he managed very well. I would recommend if anyone and everyone can go to this, would be great. Um, Jen and I would also like to attend if council will permit us. Yeah, I'd like to attend. Yeah, I would. What's the um, I'm a deaf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hard pass, so can take the next It's in the middle of the week. Yeah, let's do it weird times. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Carrie, would you have any interest? She's looking. I, I, yeah, I, I believe so, yeah. It's in Brandon, right? Okay. Oh, okay. Why did I think it was Brandon this time round? Um, would there be any benefit for um, our municipal superintendent attending this? Is this is the one that has the good It's the trade show. show. Yeah. I know, is yeah. this the one that has the good trade show? Which, yeah. Yeah, yeah this would be a good yeah. trade show too. I'm just asking if it's something that would be necessary for. It doesn't hurt for them to go at least every alternate year to the trade show. Yeah. Chris could go one year. And, yeah. And, uh, so Summer of last year. Yeah, maybe you could offer up in the system. It's a Tuesday and Wednesday. If there's, yeah, it's yeah, you don't travel Monday. Well, what it is is that's where you go on your suppliers, so that's when you meet with them, that's where you get your separate yes. deals. That's where you see new products, new way of doing yeah. things. Yeah. Like, how about a Monday, Tuesday, or a Thursday, Friday? Because people will never want to travel on their own time on a Sunday to go to a meeting. Trust me, that's I don't understand. We fight with that in Winnipeg all the time. Going, why are you wasting our days? Oh, yeah. we oh, and see, to those people down south, they don't care. Well, they're all right there. They're all yeah, there. They're there, so it doesn't matter. Just like a regular day of work yeah. for them. Yeah. Okay, so generally speaking, there's going to be somebody there. Yeah. When is We're the due date? Staff, because we don't want to. We made it very clear in the past we weren't allowed to go together. If that's your wishes, that's your wishes. Let us know. Because we have to make registrations. Can you set the agendas? They're not open. They're not open. They never are until the last. So what was the issue of not going together? Just that two of us weren't. That there wasn't one of us in the office at the time. Yeah, but what this? What is the issue with that though? Like, what would be the concerns? Council was uncomfortable with it. In case someone came here and wanted either of us to talk to a supervisor. Yeah, but if you had the flu, both you had the flu for two days, it wouldn't matter anyway. But who covers for you? No one does. They call us. If there's any issues, that phone is called us. If, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm, in, in my view, I'm fine with it. If, if there's a, a need and and it makes sense for both of you to be there, then I'm fine yeah. with it. You know what I mean? I'm we not, very seldom go at the same time. Yeah. This is one of the few. We get more, and I don't even like saying this on camera, but we get more out of the AMM and, uh, because of the regulations that are coming down the tubes. Then we do out of our own municipal administrators association. We don't even go to our association anymore, like to our meetings, our annual meetings, because we find more out of this. We make lots of contacts. And that's a lot of what it is. Well, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Well, it's always I, nice to leave one of the municipalities. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't have a problem if they both go. They got things covered. Yeah. 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 And if there's an emergency, they're going to be phoning all of us anyways. So yeah. True. Sure. So it'll be a resolution coming forward to permit people to attend the yeah. yeah, I imagine oh. Trevor going, because you'd have to get something School. Mm -hmm. And uh, Monday is uh, Newfoundland St. Patrick Day, so <laughs> <laughs> probably already off. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even travel by the Yeah, yeah, no, he'd be out of commission. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, possibly. Larry, I know, was interested. Okay, so we do resolution for five. And then for staff. Yeah. I think Sam should go really new this time. Sam went last year. Didn't go last year? That's what they said. Well, then maybe Christian will. That's what I was saying. Okay, tax increment finance program. So council had asked at one point for me to get someone from the province to come and do yes. the education session on it. Yeah. Um, they said, yeah, no problem. All they do is require a resolution, um, and that's probably for their government to let them travel down here. Sure. Would you be interested in inviting the CDC or no? I think it would yeah. be. Yeah. Okay, I just, yeah. I just written that, okay. Absolutely. So when we set it up to invite the CDC also? Yeah. So it'll be a motion for the next meeting. 
for maybe what I can do or pardon me, resolution. Maybe what I can do in the meantime is tell them the resolution is forthcoming. Please set a date so that this doesn't get pushed back. I just did some reading on tips on in the last couple of weeks. It's confusing though. It, it's really confusing, but some of the major projects that have been completed through yes. they're, they're, they're huge. City City Winnipeg. Winnipeg does them That's all the time. All the time yes. And we need to find out. If for sure. Yeah, we need to be on side with this if something was present. That whole so. waterfront area in there too, yeah. in Winnipeg. That yeah. was all through TIFF. I know. Millions of dollars. We tried it for the airport at one point before we were doing the subdivisions and it just for whatever reason it didn't fly. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I know the Red Cross also did. Right yeah. <coughs> so they For sure. Something's changed. So this is just Red Cross wants to do a little bit of a presentation to council and whoever can come. Yeah. And we encourage everybody to attend. Jen, if you don't mind, we'll yeah. get you to send out a, a notice to everybody. Okay. I'll definitely come. January 30th? I'm still waiting for the providing the time. Is there any date back? I thought it was 9 9 30 in the morning. I'm pretty sure it was Debbie Sunday as an invite. It's 9 30. How come you're Thompson? This was a little confusing. I had Debbie Howell game for me. I had Beth Erickson from Snow Lake. And then Tim or Jim from Red Cross actually calling me. All three of them were calling. I don't think we're sending you. I'm looking for the time in the Okie dokie, facility tours. Let's go have a look. Before budget, so if we can, you guys, let's get those done. Sorry, I will not respond to the emails, Jim. So we have the Kelsey Rec, the Arena Pool and Wellness Center, the Fire Department, the Airport, the Museum, and the Library. Why not? I'm, uh, I'm out of town. My sh I'm struggling with my weekends right now because I'm coaching that youth team. So I did send a message to Jen that I'm available the 26th, 27th, although I'll have a commitment in town that weekend now because we've, uh, we're hosting the Future Stars. So I'm going to run that program out of, uh, out of the, out of the pot, so which is good. But for a few hours in an evening, I have no problems of... Uh, library you could do in one evening. Yeah. Do evening. yeah, like I don't have a problem in the evening. We want to squeeze one in. Okay, well, do you want to do, uh, you want to do the museum and library in the same evening? Sure. Are you guys available uh, next week? January's up there, yeah. <laughs> How about Monday? Yep. Monday, first. Monday, Monday, Monday. Yeah. Monday, Monday. Yeah. Yeah. probably come too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So six o'clock we'll meet at the at the library and then head to the museum. Sure. Yeah. You could have also done fire department at five o'clock before your next meeting. Sure. Gives you an hour. Yeah, on the twenty eighth. Where away? I'm here on the twenty eighth. No, you said fire department. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But can we do the three, like the fire department, um, the museum, and the library all in one night? That's pushing your time to a four hour evening. Yeah, it's a pretty long evening. Yeah. So I'm going to get distracted in the museum for sure. Yeah. <laughs> too many. <laughs> <laughs> There's a too many cops in there. It's a playroom. Yeah, it's a playroom. Yeah, it's a playroom. That's in the canoe and play on the iPad. That's we it. have pictures in there with us playing in the canoe and in the jail. Okay, well, do you want to do the airport or the uh, fire department the 28th at 5 o'clock? Sure. Okay. So that just leaves uh, Kelsey Wreck. I'll wait till this all I think those two are pretty decent. I would prefer if you could do them on a Saturday just because they're pretty big items. Kelsey Wreck on the airport? Yeah. yeah. The airport, by the time you get out there, and there's, I'd like you to see it during the day, runway, stuff like that. Are you busy February 2nd? Are you busy? Yeah, like I'm gone every weekend. Um, other than, like I said, I could probably, I have the schedule for that, uh, uh, the 26th in the morning, I'm, I'm available till about 11. And then, uh, and then I'm available Sunday afternoon on the 27th. Do you want to do first thing on the 26th with Kelsey Rec? 
Is that nine? Well, that would be enough time, truthfully. Yes, because that is a few of them. Uh, can anybody make an afternoon? I probably can at some point this month. Uh, no. Friday afternoon? You can be a Friday afternoon. Oh, Friday afternoons are good, but I'm traveling already. Oh, yeah. She picks up this month. Well, like on the 25th, I could. Well, next Friday. week in the evening, what about, say, Tuesday evening if we did the uh, Tuesday, arena and the pool? Tuesday, Thursdays never work for me. Okay. But Wednesday? Wednesdays are not too Wednesday bad. is better for That's me. That's not going to work for Larry, I think. Yeah, when does Larry, Larry can't do it? What an impossible group to try and schedule. He has to. Well, well, how about we just, how about let's just hit this next it. group off. You have to just pick and it. And then see what happens after that. Like, let's. And the airport, it's going to have to wait for um, when James comes home. Because I don't think it would be in your best benefit to have just one of us do it. It should be someone like James. Okay, so could we, could we, you're at the arena all the time. Could we do the arena like on the, say, the 22nd at yeah. 6 o'clock? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Let's do the arena. Yeah, I'll do that. At 6 o'clock. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. No, that'll work over really well. And if there's time, the wellness center won't take long. Uh -huh. It's right there. Yeah. Look at that bowl and walk. At what time, sorry? Five, six? Six. 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 Earlier the better. Well, it's five, got to be, five, five. be after six. Because the 22nd is the municipal. That's at lunchtime, though, isn't it? No, that's all, all day, isn't it? But, uh, oh, no, no. but the uh, EMO oh, training oh, course. During the day. I thought it was, but yeah, that'll be that should be over by four. You think so? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I bet it's over by three thirty. Which one are we wearing? No, that's not me. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. Just be a position of the energy. Okay, so. So the twenty second is fine for the arena. And you'll do arena and long side. And you'll send this all up. Yes, I will. 20 second, 5 p.m. And, and then we'll go from there after that. The only thing left yeah. would be pool and pool. airport. Yeah. yeah. Pool and airport. Wow. Okay. Hey, that's pretty good. That was yeah. one of the meetings you just did. Now, was anything down for the 26th? No. <laughs> okay. I'll say yes. <laughs> That's but strategic planning the, day. When your calendar no, goes. No, 21st, 22nd. For okay. chamber. When your calendar goes bing, 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 bing. Yeah. And we have to make sure this works for the facility people, yeah. like the people yeah. that are doing the facility. That's why I didn't put anything in my phone. I'll just I wait. Okay. You I betcha. Payroll accounts. So we would require a resolution for pay period 26, the amount of 114, 195, 13. Um, general checks for 162,0247, and EFTs at 46, 769, 26, for a total of 321, 166. Um, then on the next page, we are approving checks for Northern Building Supply and Larry Forrester. And two separate I, resolutions. Yes. Yeah. So okay. that which already deposited is it? So I don't know if you found this a little easier to look through with the checklisting that was attached to it. Super. So, so super basically, good. you've got um, a couple that are big ticket items: advanced technology that's with your water treatment plant, your um, operations mm -hmm. manual. No. Yes. Yep. Oh, that's what Yeah, I scrolled on that for a second. Um, trading company, we had office supplies and fuel. Then we have MEBP, that's with our pension plan. Where so, did for commercial for 60,000? That's that manual, isn't it? The commercial pool? Mm -hmm. yeah, first page? First page, 15,900. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the lecturer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 
all you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> How do you handle the? Do you do you handle? Is it a good thing? No. Okay. We're having an issue with the animal shelter, and I was just going to ask a question, but that's okay. Didn't stop when you guys moved. Huge deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is the MTCML? That's their municipal trading company. There was fuel, that's where we purchase our fuel, and that's also where we purchase our supplies, like through like office supplies and stuff like that. So office stationery, like three thousand dollars, like that would be like a year supply. Huh? That's year supply. A year? Yeah. And then we order just as we need, but there's certain things that we need at the beginning of each year to, like your file folders, your Eight calendars. Yeah, all of that kind of stuff. And then we just kind of nickel and dime through the year as we need. You do find that a little better detail or no? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's great. Yeah, for sure. So at North Fringe, uh, we paid them Again, another ten thousand dollars for rental, but why are we still paying them ten thousand dollars of the rental in December? I think that's when we were sending them all back. That's when we sent a lot of that stuff back. The end of December. Certainly been our last yeah. billing of it. I can double check. Which one is it? North, North Fringe. Fringe. Mm -hmm. So I thought that all that stuff was sent back in November. Two 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 seven four. We thought some of it was because when we went to the town garage, there was still one there. A pump like that? That was in October. Those were sure. that was they were sending it back right away. We figured all of that whole scheme yeah. and cost us or whatever. It was just payment of it, did not really right? Yeah, it was not cheap. No. And any other questions, you guys? No. Yeah, there's one more, and um, it's, mm -hmm. it's probably nothing. Mm -hmm. How can how can the town of the park be the town of the park? How can the town of the park be the town of the park? What that is is they take um through clearing account. It's clearing account. What's clearing account? But they take money off our well, we've all signed things to take money off our checks for like the wellness center or for your water bill and I get forty dollars taken off my check okay. and then it's just put in an account and then every month they write a check to the town to pay off all of those. For thirty-five hundred dollars. Yeah, there's a lot of employees that do it. Oh, okay. I just wondered how the uh, town paid the town. Yeah. Water bills, property taxes, and all that kind of stuff. Deductions, basically. And six on two, 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 Sure, you check on that. What? Does he have business or is it? Double check. Because Jim has been doing all the work in the house and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. He's the main one to call now. There's nobody else around. If you need doors, commercial doors, units, and glass replaced, then he's done. Who's that? Jim's custom working windows? Yeah, I saw that on here. Who is that? Clear box, good box. Oh. They did work for some Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah. in conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's nobody. Yeah. Yeah. My brain kind of went to church for a second. Exactly. Yes, they are. I think Sharon doesn't get into that. You know, because we, again, just on the business mm -hmm. license aspect of things, these are, this is your checkout list. Yeah. Yeah. Right? This is your checkout well, list. Well, that's here. You know, somebody like 
like that would be a five hundred dollar business license for the year, right? Can I quite? Some things you would think of their water to the town. Check on just doing that. Yeah. So we require a resolution for yeah. table and house. Any more questions on this, you guys? No. We all right. We beat it. We beat it. Yeah. All right. Bell MTS. This is the lease that they have out at the airport site and. This is basically a recommendation to look at extending it under the terms for another five years. And basically you're looking at with the renewal being a 7.5% increase and B being a percentage equal to the change in the annual consumer CPI over the last two years. So what it is is going with the same fees with the CPI. So we would require a resolution. Mm -hmm. Big one there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, little building. The elected municipal official training workshop. There you go. This is kind of exciting. So they're having workshops in February and uh, in Headingley, Sandback, Dauphin, Brandon, Brandon. Apparently, Dauphin is considered north. That's north. Yeah. But you can also do webinars, which I don't believe there was a cost for that. Yeah, oh, there's like $40 for me. So I don't know if anybody wants to attend in person or if anybody would like to participate via webinar. Trumpers Festival is that week, yep. so I'll be here. But if anybody wants to go and learn about... Uh, well, I, I suggest that if we do anything, we do a webinar. Yeah. I mean, technology nowadays is pretty easy to knock that up real quick. So you're looking at February 26th and 27th, March 5th and 6th, or 6th. If you can let us know and you can register for the webinar. I'd say March 6th. Because you're not here? <laughs> <laughs> I think our leader has to be at this one. I will be at that one. <laughs> can we just do one big webinar or would you not just do it on your own? You can do it on your own. Well, if you give us a sign in credentials. I can do that. We will. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, but everyone just needs to let me know when, yeah, what day works best. Yeah, I'm not I think it's very interactive from what I understood oh, in reading okay. this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, they're getting a little better with this stuff because they're realizing that the North isn't coming to things anymore. Why would they? Well, it's, it's, it's a boarding trip no matter what you do. Yeah. Do you want me to send an email with the webinar dates? Perfect. And then everyone Time can just access codes. Okay. And if we could get the, like, how long it is, right? Okay. Like if it's an all-day webinar thing, I'm yeah, probably sure. not going to sign up for that. But if it's There's a few hours, in I can squeeze it into my day. day. Or take in what you can. But if you look at the stuff, it's code of conduct and conflict of interest, finance and assessment, council meetings and making legislation and enforcement, the role of the ombudsman, fire commissioner, waste disposal sites and wastewater management, and learning about your economy. Yeah. That's it. Do you want to do if it's a webinar, well, if there's we no cost. Be, there's $40. $40. Oh, there we go. I know, break the bank. Resolution. I would do it. Just say that council will take part in this, yeah. just yeah. general. Uh, so one thing that wasn't on here, I just want so tomorrow was a uh, meeting with the uh, water board. Yeah, can we get a conference line to call into? Like, I really do have a commitment at one that I can't get out of. We can try and arrange it for a last minute conference call. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I thought I, I actually thought I had sent Jen an email and I didn't. Uh, but when I seen that, it's just it's it's twelve fifteen till one fifteen, and I actually I have a meeting and I can't miss on one. But if I can call into it. If worse comes to worse and we can't set it up that last minute or do a three way, I could bring a cell in and you can just. Well, we can, uh, but like, don't you, don't we have, don't we, we, do we have a conference line where you can just no. call? No, we don't do that because we wouldn't use it enough and it costs to have that. Just but we'll figure it out. Because well, I could, I could probably potentially share a conference line then. Like, I could give you a line. I wonder if, uh, if they would have one. Can I ask them? Because we're calling in. We're calling in to them. So if there's only a few people, we can do a three-way call. Like if others are going to be here. So. Yeah, maybe they'll have a, a technology there and we just phone them. They can give us a number to phone. Yeah. Well, he can give us a number to phone. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it would be easy, way easier than I can call in yeah. from. Yeah, well, it's And then I do have to, I will have to check out of that right at one. Like, I won't be able to stay over you're on probably it. probably not going to be that long anyway. Okay. Well, you never know. You never heard me ask questions before. Well, I'm, smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that smart. We'll get, I, I mean, did I? We'll get their phone number for you. See if you can call. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Your cell phone number. Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So we have a couple. No, it's not adjourned. Oh yeah. This this whatever that rule is again. Where is that so again? So click on seven. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay, so um, ready? Resolve that we now move ourselves into an in camera portion of the Committee of the Whole with Mayor Jakes in the chair to discuss matters requiring our attention. There may be a resolution to come on at this. Okay, so we uh, we talked, we met, we had a discussion. There'll be a resolution coming forward in our next meeting to uh, support the Tri City Smart Cities Challenge. Yeah. That's it.